let's talk a little about idle bass tuning. We're going to jump straight into it because this is a pretty lengthy subject if we spend too much time on uh, the little details before we get started. First, we want to disable any idle feedback before we start tuning the bass table. So we're going to open the wizard for idle. We've got idle feedback min set to very small values. Idle feedback max, also a very small value. On below TPS, on below RPM, those are for feedback activation. So those don't matter when we're setting up the bass table. This feedback setup here also doesn't matter when we're setting up the bass table. Bass position input can be either coolant temperature or idle target. I prefer to use coolant temperature, so we're going to leave that as is. Most of these other settings are feedback related, so we're going to not touch any of them, and we're just going to go straight to running the engine and setting up the bass position table. Let's start a log and start the engine. The bass position table is a simple open loop idle position. So we're using coolant temperature as the input to it. So as our coolant temperature is in certain cells in this table, it says over here that our coolant temperature is about 46 degrees. So we're between the 32 and 68 degrees F uh, cell. So our position should be between 60 and 57%. And we see it here, it is, it's about 59. And based on that position, our actual RPM is 1500 RPM versus our idle target is about 1550. So what I would do based on those numbers is I would adjust both of those cells. I'm gonna adjust all three cells. I'm gonna go up a little bit because I'd rather see the RPM be slightly higher than target than see the RPM exactly at the target without feeding feedback on. Now this idle target table is, on our setup, it's independent from the base position, uh, but it will be used for feedback. So you want to Set this to values that you are happy with before making adjustments to your base position table. So now as the engine starts warming up, we're at 68 degrees F. That's exactly right in the center of this cell. So our target RPM is 1500. Our actual RPM is 16 something, which is too high. So that means that this is too high and needs to go down. So we make a little adjustment to that and we get a little closer to our target. A few other things that are going to affect how the engine idles, uh, besides just the idle airflow, which is being controlled by the space position table, is the ignition map of the vehicle. So let's go look at ignition map. Usually for the cells that the car will idle in, which are vacuum um, up to atmosphere, you know, whatever RPMs are set to. You want those numbers to be pretty similar for ignition timing. 1600 here is the max RPM that we have set for cold idle on this car. Uh, if we were to set max cold idle up to something higher, these ignition cells here that have a few degrees more timing uh, might make it want to sort of run away and keep the RPM too high. So that's something to be aware of. The ignition timing affects horsepower. Horsepower affects how high the RPM gets when it's idling. Uh, other things, VE and lambda target. So I think we've got feedback disabled. That's a good idea uh, to minimize how many variables are happening. And it's also pretty important that your lambda targets are relatively constant, again, uh, in idle RPM areas. So you can see in here this spark timing is, is graphed in this idle template, and lambda versus lambda target are also uh, on the plot. Now if lambda was hopping around a lot, uh, we may need to go back and fix the VE or the lambda targets to, to make sure that the engine idles smoothly. If you've already got your lambda targets dialed in and your spark timing is relatively constant uh, while the engine's idling, then idle base position is the next thing to be tuning before adjusting any sort of feedback. So what we're doing here is we're just letting the engine warm up, coolant temperature 114, which is going to be here on this cell, and then we check our target RPM of 1400 versus our measured RPM of a little bit above 1400. Now the reason that it's better to have the actual RPM a little higher than the target, uh, there's two things. One is your feedback can, can go and fix that. But the other thing is that if the RPM is below the target, then the engine's that much closer to stalling when uh, additional load happens. For instance, right now we're going to turn on the headlights on this car without making any other changes. Headlights on, you can see and hear that the RPM dropped. And also now, air conditioner's off, but we're gonna turn on just the cabin blower fan. We're gonna turn on the fan, and that's also some load on the engine. 
So you can see there that the RPM dropped when the, the fan was on. So we'll turn the fan off. RPM comes back up. We'll turn the headlights off. RPM comes back up. So those are the sort of things where if you're making all these adjustments without the headlights on and without the cabin fan on, uh, it's, it's a good idea to try to get the RPM a little bit higher than your actual target uh, using the base table. Coolant temperature is now 130 something, so we're between these two cells, the 140F and the 104F table. Now two things are happening here is you can see here that the idle target RPM is dropping as the engine warms up, so our target is now something around 1300. Now that 1300 RPM target is going to need a much lower base position. So you can see that the ECU is interpolating between these cells and we're, as the RPM target drops, our base position is also dropping. The reason to use coolant temperature as the input for the base position is that you may find on some vehicles that for one coolant temperature, for the same target RPM, say we're targeting 1000 RPM here for any coolant temperature that's considered warm, it may require different amounts of idle base position to hit that target, um, especially on a cold engine. These numbers down here, we're targeting nearly the same RPM, and we have a pretty pretty uh, significant difference in, in the base position it took. Now this cell down here, this minus 4 degrees F, has not been tuned. It would probably need to be a larger number just to hit the same exact RPM target uh, because the cold engine needs a little more uh, airflow to, to stay running at the same RPM. Now the engine's getting a bit warmer, 151 degrees F, so we are close to this cell here, and we're watching that the as the target drops, the RPM drops, and this is all feedback disabled. You can see the feedback has been the same number here. We're just running off of the base table. Now over here, our lambda needs to be adjusted here. This lambda being leaner than target is going to make enough difference in horsepower that the engine's probably not, not going to run quite as nicely for idle. So this is a an RPM in our VE table that needs to be changed. So let's go fix that before we do any changes to our idle tuning. We drop it to a lower cell here. That's not perfect, but it's closer to what we want. And notice that after changing that air fuel ratio, the uh, the RPM went up without any changes to the idle position. So what that means is that we probably don't need as much idle airflow to hit that RPM target. Now that the car is getting closer to warm, it's a good idea to double check again your um, with the headlights on and the blower fan on to see how much, how much uh, margin for error we've got here. Another thing, especially if this is a vehicle that is uh, pretty new in terms of the ECU calibration setup, the car is approaching warm, so it's probably a good idea to go and double check that our coolant fans are turning on. If the ECU is controlling the cooling fan, you want to double check that that's working properly before you need it to prevent overheating. So on this setup, the fan control is wired into low side 2 double click that. The turn on temperatures are usually set to 180 degrees F. We are above 160 degrees F so I'm going to change that to 160 here and 157 there. Click OK. You can see here that the layout shows us that the fan turned on and you would want to go and double check physically that there's air moving through the radiator because the cooling fan's working now. Uh, that's the sort of, sort of thing that you want to check before the engine gets, you know, approaching too hot. Another thing is to double check that the there is an option in the wizard for cooling fan. There's an idle bump when the cooling fan is on. That's in the trims and offsets. So the main trim and offset that that needs to be tuned if the and if the car has air conditioner. Uh, the air conditioner is a lot of load on the engine. Uh, we'll show that later. But there's also a coolant fan offset so that it can get a bump in idle percentage. So now our, we can see that here that our base position numbers are 37. 
our coolant fan offset is 1.5%, so it's 38 point something rather than 37.0 because our cooling fan is off. Uh, and if we were to zero that out, our, our position drops down a little bit. Now the purpose of that is to make sure that, that uh, when the cooling fan kicks on that the RPM doesn't drop uh, because of the additional load on, on, the, uh, on the engine when the alternator is powering the cooling fan. This enable delay might not be in all calibrations. Uh, that's just a time delay between when the RPM, when the idle percent bump happens and when the fan output actually turns on. So now we're pretty happy with how that how that cooling fan is working and how the, the engine is still idling okay uh, when the cooling fan kicks on. So let's go set those settings back to their original values of 180 and 177. Now you can see the output turned off. We can watch what the RPM did when that output turned off. Uh, we don't want the RPM to make big fluctuations when the fan kicks on or off. Uh, otherwise we can we can make adjustments for that. Now this RPM is getting a little bit a little bit high compared to the target. Uh, it's a it's a hundred something RPM above our target so I would go in here and I would adjust this down a little bit to get us you know a hundred RPM or so not not two hundred RPM above our target.